Introducing Tiger Cage, a reality show about real entrepreneurs meeting real investors for raising money. Assalamu alaikum, I'm Mahdi Hassan. I'm the co-founder and CTO of Adama Robotics. We are a UK-based education technology startup who is empowering the future generation with STEM education and skill sets. We are offering 5% equity of our company for Taka 50 lakhs. There is a huge lack of STEM professionals in the industry due to not being properly trained and going through a curriculum which has been designed decades ago. Still, the textbook methods students memorize and go to exams and just give it. So at Adamo Robotics, we came up with educational products which meet those needs. Firstly, we have our online courses, then we have our Bell Educational Robot, then we have a visual programming software, Adama Script, which makes programming as easy as connecting blocks. And then we have our Adama Code Club, which um, is an after-school code club. Students can learn and interact with our robot and programming at the same time in schools, after the schools. So, um, we have about 15,000 students enrolled in our online courses from over 138 countries, which we sell through different online platforms. And we have sold about 50 units of build, which we have created a couple of months ago. And we're in talks with a Maker Lab organization to sell another 200. And then we are partnering with four schools to create curriculum for our code club. And the last one is we are um, launching a Adama Code Club, which is going to be an after school code club where students can learn programming and robotics with our kids and it will take place after the school. So if you'd like to um, be a part of our venture and help us create an impact, please join us. I'd like to see a robot. Thank you, just give us a demo. You're, you're trying a demo? Sure, cool. Yeah. So um, this is our Bell robot, and this is the app where you can control with this joystick. You can make it move. So children can play football tournament with this and have fun. It has got different sensors, and uh, it can make different noises. And you can also use the gyro sensor, like you know how you play games. Mm -hmm. So you use this sensor, and you can move it like this. Oh, cool. And Did a child make this? No, 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 no. We okay. made this for design for a child. But this is designed for a child, right? Design this is designed for, for a child. Is this uh, for playing purposes or education? Uh, educational purposes. We have our visual programming software that they can go through the curriculum doing different lessons. For example, uh, when you use a block programming language, you instruct the robot to go forward and uh, do different lessons. And they get a point based on that. And we um, try to like, retain their attention because children's attention is very short, right? They don't like to do things which is very boring. Believe me, adults too. Can I try it? Yes, yeah, sure. So this is our app. So okay, this so this joystick. is move around. Move around, joystick. Where's forward? So how much does this cost? So uh, it costs about Taka 7,000 per unit. That's a lot of money for a little bit of round robot. You're learning a lot of things. Yes, Which you're paying in institutions. It's a, it's a toy? It's a lesson, it's a lesson. It's a lesson. So that's for uh, yeah. light. This is the joystick. joystick this and one. you can change the lights yeah, so too. What is, this cool. is the light. That's right? for changing the color here. Ah. Multiple colors. Yes, I see that. That's pretty cool. How many have you sold so far? Oops, so we have sold about 50 right. units. <laughs> Okay. You can tell I'm not very good at this. How many do you intend to yeah, sell yeah. this year? So uh, we want to sell about 500 units by the end of this year. So we're partnering with different schools. And another thing is we're... Uh, All of them in Bangladesh? In Bangladesh and in UK as well. Okay. So uh, we're planning to talk with Ministry of Education and we're building curriculum so that we can teach them in ICT. Uh, there's this subject, ICT education. Mm -hmm. So you want to put like little by little and they get exposed more to this STEM education. So I have a question about your monetizing strategy, right? You've said what the price of this is, about 7,000. 7, you sold 200, you want to sell 7? No, we have sold 50 units. 50 and you want to sell? Uh, 500 by the end of this year. Right, so that's really not a lot of volume, right? How do you make money? So right now we have uh, money from our online courses, which we sell at 10 to $15 unit, and we provide workshops. For which when you say 10 to $15, is that for the Bangladesh market or UK? You that's, are operating in That's both. the worldwide market. Okay. So we have created four courses where we have like 15,000 students enrolled. We sometimes provide discounts to get them into the course. And uh, mostly like it comes to 10 $15. Okay. 
and the, just a little bit for my understanding, the course is complementing the curriculum of Bangladesh no, education? No, courses, courses separate. Well, th those are STEM courses, like we have courses on robotics, programming, yes. Android applications. Very different from academia. Different. So that is uh, something that a student may want to learn, it's not required. No, no, that's not required, right. yes, yes. So what would, what motivates somebody to go and learn more than their ex ex the pressure they have of the school work as it is? So uh, the courses are designed for basically university students who okay. go into the first year, and this is designed for younger children. So you have two target markets? Two target markets, yes. Okay. So we have created the course and um, the courses are in different platforms. We've uploaded it and it just uh, gives us revenue in passive way. And the fund that you will raise, you are trying to uh, put the fund into use for which market? The school? So for, for the school children. And not for the online courses? No, no, not for the online courses. Because for that, we only have investment of time for the courses that we create. But for this one, we have manufacturing cost, then we have to market it. And um, we have spoken to a couple of schools. Some of them didn't understand, some of them understood. So we are partnering and There's providing- Schools here. Schools here in Bangladesh, yes. So that's why we're uh, also introducing this Adama Code Club, which where we will have a subscription model of uh, $10, five to $10 per month per children. And are these private sector students or the government schools? So uh, we are starting with the private sector, basically in English medium first. And once we understand how they're working, then we can go to the... And who buys the, the device? Is it the school or the student? Uh, so for now, it's the schools in Bangladesh. So we're planning to... Student would never buy. It's always the school buying. If they want to buy, they can buy, but it's expensive. Yeah. So the, most of the people, they said uh, 7,000 taka is too much. So that's why we're selling it to schools like uh, in a unit like uh, say 10 to 15 units they can use the robot to teach like one class after another class it's like How many students can learn what is the ratio for one device so three students can learn one device simultaneously okay. so they not only develop technical skills they also develop soft skills so they learn to collaborate you can dismantle this again then yes, you can the school can reuse one every so they don't keep have to buy no, one no, for no, every they don't have to keep buying it my question is okay my favorite question is like why did you get started on this and who is your founder do you have another founder who's helping you yes so i'm the co-founder and cto my partner he is the founder and ceo so he he's in uk right now and i'm operating in bangladeshi market so, so and so what business are you in are you in business of manufacturing selling these are you in the STEM education? It's STEM education. It's STEM education, but they need these devices to, you know, complement fulfill, the, complement the learning. Well, I think I get where you're coming from because if this is being done all over the world, okay, you don't need to reinvent the wheel. And the question is, are you in the are you in the business of making curriculum? Are you in, uh, in the business of making robots? Are you in the business of uh, educating people in a particular way of oh coding or? or so, in so STEM, right? Uh, so just let me finish because you could easily buy a package or tie up with someone already doing this and sell that here versus having all the overheads of doing it yourself. So yes, we're in the business of curriculum and teaching here. So are, are you, is your curriculum in Bangla, is your, co is your script, language script in Bangla? No, no, that's in English. But uh, the instructions, everything, we have it in Bangla and English in other languages. Okay. okay go, let me go into the pertinent question. Like, how much revenue are you earning right now, and you know, what are you going to do with the investment? So right now, uh, we are earning um, like by selling the kits. That's the direct revenue, and um, it's uh, at the moment it's not too much because we've started recently. So like five months the kit, but before we have the courses and workshops. How old is your company? So it's uh, we have registered in 2016. But uh, we are working like with my partner from the university when I was in like second year. So we formed a society and then we started doing workshops and work with schools. So we generate, we're generating revenue from the workshops right now. How much is that? So we charge about like 500 to 700 taka per person per workshop. So how much is that in a month? How many workshops and how much? Oh, so for, uh, for the moment, like we have uh, about like 10, 15 workshops where we can generate about 10 to 20,000 taka per workshop. So, so roughly one lakh. One lakh fifty thousand about that. Who does the workshops? Uh, me with my teams. How scalable is those workshops? Mm. How many can you do? I mean, scale korte kora jabe. So right now, uh, at the moment, I'm recruiting trainers. So I do it myself, and I have got a couple of trainers. So we go to different schools and different institutions, and uh, we're reaching about like 10, 15 max. So I need more people, 
who I can train and they can, then they can go and run. So the investment you're asking for is going to go into the training program or? In investment is basically for uh, when we will be producing more robots, getting more orders, manufacturing and then operations and also marketing and scaling. So my son and my nephew goes to a, one of these after school programs mm -hmm. where they build robots, right? The tech school sort of a thing. Um, and it's interesting, kids love it. And, and, and slightly older kids, they are robot, they say transformers and things. So there is a market for it. But um, I'm just wondering, is it, big enough? is it big enough? This is definitely big enough. Like, uh, no, the market is, the numbers are there, but are you going after that market? Yes, yes, we're going after that. With this product, I'm not sure. No, so right now we, have, uh, we are launching it soon because uh, once we understand how they're working, then we will develop more, like a better version of the product with like less price, price money. money. What is the biggest challenge you're facing right now, like face, besides facing us? So, <laughs> so right now, um, like a lot of schools, as I said, they don't understand the product. So the market, as you guys mentioned, that it's not ready, that point of view. So um, I have to make them understand doing the workshops like with our people we have to tell them this is how it's going to work. And uh, another thing is the teachers that we have, like the STEM teachers or science teachers, they, they st still don't understand the technology. So what we are doing is we are uh, recruiting university students who are in the STEM fields, for example, in computer science major or electrical and electronics engineering major to do these workshops for us. And they're getting experience by doing it. How much did you say you're asking for? Uh, we are asking for five, uh, we're offering 5% five equity for TACA 50 lakhs. For 50 lives. Okay. Okay. So, anybody? there's a 10 protocol valuation for selling 250 robots. How quickly can you, that I know I agree with him that that's pretty high, but I, the question is how quickly can you bring a million robot of these things into Bangladesh? Let's say you got an order tomorrow for a million, how quickly could you bring it? So, we, we have the capacity, to, like our partners, they have the capacity to produce 50,000 robots per month. Oh, um, your partners have it meaning are they doing it elsewhere is this they robot available yeah it's elsewhere? Uh, these, so these are very standard these, these are, are standard forms, standard standard forms. forms. so uh, i mean what is unique yeah. that uh, are you bringing to the table i mean somebody who has a lot of money could just go to china and bring Buy, a million of yeah. and, and, uh, and give it for half the are. price people are doing it all yeah, yeah. that's what i was saying so you know? for half the price why and reinvent and the wheel and get the government deal how do you fight that it's our curriculum there. Like, as I mentioned, we're in the STEM education and teaching business here, right? So we provide gamified curriculums right. based on the uh, programming language, which is also based on Scratch. Uh, yeah. Scratch is a visual yeah. programming language you connect. So uh, there's this institution called MIT, mm -hmm. and everybody uses this uh, for, to teach the fundamentals. So if you like, if you know ABC, you can write the words and then sentences. No, so we get that. We understand you have an online curriculum and we understand you have this, but the two are mutually exclusive, right? M mutually I mean, you, you could do Don't one either, without yeah. the other. You can, you can, I mean, this, is, this is just a tool, right? Yeah. This is a tool to implement so, our... Right. So um, let's say you have this, you could ha also have a water pump. You could also have a... So you'll have multiple of these things, right? Yes. But th this is available off the shelf. Th this, this kind of robots are available. off the shelf. So uh, your concentration is not necessarily on the robots and designing robots, but it's on designing the curriculum. Designing the curriculum. And also, um, so basically robot is a tool. It complements. Right. So we are producing more different kinds of products. So you were saying that you're in the business of teaching. Right. Teaching and also supplementing with robots. Supplementing yeah. with using technology. Like we said, this is a tool, right? So it's if you're in the business of teaching, you know your, what your market is. It's the government schools. Government. In Bangladesh, Absolutely. it is the it government, is the government schools, schools. For sure. Right? Yes. So if you get the government schools, you're a winner. If you don't get them, um, I uh, have an online learning platform called Upskill, and we do a lot of workshop and and STEM. I think is is a fundamental part of future of education and from my side uh, I would love to work with you because I think we need to start conversation in Bangladesh around STEM and and I and I, I think the curriculum and you need the hardware to to actually teach that so uh, I um, I'm, I'm open to partnership and and we can work to you know find something that we can work together and, and benefit
both of us. Sure, sure. That seems like an amazing opportunity for me. Okay, so that is my offer to work with you. Awesome. I'm open to it. This is an amazing opportunity. Again. Great, great, great. Thank you very much Thank for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so what we're looking at is the future of education, STEM. Yeah, I agree, but I think that this particular one, there's two plays. There's uh, the government schools, okay, that's where the market is. And the other is, what he didn't say is that he's got an ecosystem, right? He has the teachers, the, tools, the curriculum, he's going into the, he has the programming, the after school programs, and there's a lot of follow on people, there's a lot of follow on that can be done. Um, for keeping a customer stuck within an ecosystem to have them graduate towards becoming a full coder for whoever's in that, right? So there's the premium market and there's the mass market and those are the two markets that there are. One is a great cash generator, the other is competitive but also in the premium category, um, competitive. That's, that's my take on this business. Sure. Sonia, you are from technology. Yeah, so I'm going to tell take? you that my take is a bit different because I think um, if I think academia and I think, um, you know, when you have those smart glasses or uh, the lens that you can see with, we've seen how in technology children are learning just looking at the lens, how, how a plant fertilization happens, how, how the human body works. The AR and the VR. Yes, yeah, so mm. the augmented reality is where you can complement the real education. This is more on, on a skill set that is extending beyond your academia. Mm. And if I was to say, okay, if I'm going to focus on Bangladesh market, I would like people to get a bit more of, of a touch and feel of what the real things they're learning, as opposed to saying, okay, what does a robot do when I do a command or when I do a, a fun activity? So it's good, but we're not there yet. I, I don't think so. So where should he start from? I mean, if you are in this place, what would you recommend him to do now? So if I was in his place, I would actually not focus on the 50 devices or the 250 that he's targeting, right? I would, I would, I would build on my online curriculum, curriculum and, and I would try to strengthen, because everybody complains that our national curriculum is not very strong, right? right? Mm. Compa competing globally. I would lift the base first. I would say, okay, let's make the foundation strong before I morph. Right. I mean, if I don't have a, we a strong foundation, I'm, I'm going to be very wobbly. So I, I, would, I would redirect my energy and saying, Focus on making the foundation strong, strong first, and then you pivot. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. The tribe has spoken.